And we are back, folks, for another edition of the Michigan Recruiting Insider. This is uh, springtime, springtime at least as far as the visit lists are concerned. And as the team comes off the spring break and, pa- and practices pick up, the dead period ends, and players, prospects are ready to descend on campus to talk about that, to preview all of the visitors that are supposed to, or at least uh, a lot of them that are supposed to be visiting in the month of March. My esteemed colleagues at the Michigan Insider, starting off first with Bryce Marich, looks like you're on the links, right? You're not in the bed today. You're on the links. How about that? I'm not. I'm not. I, yeah, yeah. No, I actually am. I actually am still in the bedroom. But uh, I was told by my wife, you you got to have a virtual background. So I said, like you said, springtime, trying to get a little, you know, try to get out outdoors. So I thought this would be good. But the guys, you know, right before we got on, gave me crap because obviously you could see the little you know, <sighs> I mean, you, you, I, I wasn't expecting for you to kind of open up about that on the air. And kinda, I, I, was, I was really trying I, to I don't make, care. How you fake it till you make it, man. It's all right. I, I think it looks good. Listen, if people don't like it, give me suggestions for next week. I'll put up a new virtual background. Yeah, we and Steve, we got to get a photo or something, man. We gotta get we gotta get a Steve Lorenz like drinking a Bell's Two Hearted Ale or something right there in that, in that photo <laughs> box. Yeah, we could have that we could have that arranged. Yeah, let's make that happen. Steve, how you doing? Good, good, good to be back on. Yeah, spring visit wise, hopefully the weather catches up to the visit schedule pretty soon. So, looking forward to it. Well, one guy uh, that we know is going to be back and we've talked about him on the podcast before because he is a big 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 time target for the the maize and blue and michigan trending up with him young mr aaron childs if you missed that podcast be sure to go back and check it out we've had a couple of stories up as well including an interview with his mom over on the michiganinsider.com if you aren't signed up now's the time to get in you can keep track of all of these visits just one dollar it's a great compliment to what you get here on the podcast, which is kind of more of a broad brush. But Bryce, I think it's pretty clear when he came in the studio that he loved Michigan. But shortly after he left, George Hilo was out and Chris Partridge came back in. That kind of maybe slowed things down a bit, as we said. But looks like Michigan made it clear to him he is a top priority. Yeah, some fans might be thinking it's like you take one step forward and you have two steps back with the George Hilo news. But lo and behold, you got Chris Partridge, new linebackers coach that just came in, um, who's done a really good job in that recruitment, not only with Aaron, but his mom, the whole family, um, and made him feel basically essentially part of the family as well. And that was a big thing when we talked to Coach Harbaugh, early spring presser. Someone asked him at the availability, what makes Chris Partridge such a good recruiter? And he said he simply he simply becomes part of the family that he's recruiting. You know, these families seem connected. They really like his personality. And I know we talked about it last podcast, but he's shown the ability to learn new cultures, get out there in spots that maybe we're not familiar with and he's not familiar with, and basically become part of the community there and part of the school and part of the kids' family. Um, so he's done a really good job to the point where Sam, he, Aaron Childs, who's a top two, four, seven linebacker, is not only coming up this month, he's coming up again in June for official visits. So I really like where Michigan stands. I said this last podcast, I think Michigan leads right now. I wouldn't say he's going to shut it down after this first trip, but they've done a really good job in this recruitment leading up to it. And we can see if they can keep building going forward as well. Steve, you wrote a piece uh, shortly after Partridge was hired that said, hey, Aaron Childs, if he hasn't reached out to him already, uh, it's happening really soon. Not only did he reach out to Aaron, who he was already recruiting at Ole Miss, he reached out to his mom to get acquainted with with her as well. So, like, we know CP to do, covering all the bases. I was going to say, yeah, Partridge doing what we know Partridge does, right? Uh, You know, I feel like, yeah, I agree all the way. Michigan in really good shape here uh, coming into this visit. This does feel like a visit where I think you could see some crystal balls coming in afterwards. Uh, 
really, I mean, I think we all agree this will just come down to how comfortable he is with Partridge in person. Uh, otherwise, it feels like Michigan will be in the driver's seat. Uh, you know, it already feels like they're ahead, but that's really the only kind of hiccup in this one is that position coaches have changed. And we talked last week about with Jaden Davis, uh, totally fair for the prospect to want to come back up, meet his new, his new position coach, and really end up maybe picking right back where things left off. So, you know, yeah, Michigan – has uh, worked hard in this one, and it wasn't just George Hilo. I mean, Hilo was the right. the main guy, but this is a guy that the whole staff is is after the whole defensive staff. So it's not as if he's going to be totally unfamiliar with what he sees. But but yeah, no big visit and uh, a great program to try to get into as well at uh, at Good Council, where Michigan is really working hard. Yeah, they uh, you know from a groundwork perspective, great point, Steve, because Jim Harbaugh was was all over that one too. Uh, they came away with a great impression of of Coach Harbaugh, of Jesse Minter, who we got news that he's not going to the Eagles, right? So uh, it, it's you still have some relationships there and a great relationship builder and a guy who they can really sell on the fit. We kind of emphasized this before. Uh, and you look around, and I think one of the things that can really help them in, in this recruitment, I think they kind of expect for there to be movement now because George Hilo experience his mom was kind of talking about how they realized that you're going to see a lot of fluctuation in these staffs i think harbaugh can kind of give some comfort in that he turned down he clearly turned down the pursuit of the denver broncos and so while you know teams will come knocking they just pay what 15 16 million dollars in draft picks for for sean payton harbaugh can step up and say hey look this is where i want to be this is where i plan to be if, we, if coaches leave, we're going to go get other really good coaches just like we did with CP. I think that's something that can really resonate in addition to the academics. Not to mention the fact that when they come up, Pam's supposed to come up too as track coach and Michigan alum. She's supposed to be on that visit as well. So uh, things looking up as far as connections are concerned and getting him back up on campus. But you mentioned it. You, both of you guys mentioned it. Good counsel. Michigan is – I, and not just Michigan, but a lot of schools are setting up shop, you know, planting a flag in good counsel, trying to get a bunch of prospects. And Bryce, one of the guys that Michigan really covets or another one of the guys they really covet is Darian Mayo. Yeah. And I, you know, the thing with good counsel, this is in their first rodeo, you know what I'm saying? Going to the school. I mean, they got Chris Jenkins a couple of years ago and that's paid dividends for them in the coming seasons. And I, and I personally think he's going to be one of their best defensive prospects up front and in the whole defense coming up. But yeah, Darren Mayo, da Darian Mayo, Sam, you mentioned big, big, big physical kid, six foot seven, 250 pounds edge rusher. Um, and this is something where this past cycle, Michigan has gotten some edge rushers. You see like Amer Kumba and, uh, you know, Etta and some other guys, but, Darian Mayo fits more of the Mike Morris build. I mean, he's just big. He's a big body, but he can move. He's still kind of learning the game. He's still kind of raw. He's working on his technique. But that's where Michigan, excel, Michigan excels. You know, they pride themselves as being developmental you. That's what they do. You know what I'm saying? That's our bread and butter. That's what we do. So this is a kid that they've been working on for a while. I know GA assistant Dylan Rooney. Aroni has been very vital in this recruitment. Mike Elston has made a great impression on him and his family as well. He will be coming up March 13th. That's a big time visit. This is his first trip to Michigan. So he's going to be able to experience everything. And a guy they really like off the edge as well, which as Steve has pointed out, they're recruiting. I, Steve, I might get the number wrong, but I want to say it's what, like seven edge rushers just from the DMV alone. Yeah, DMV is a big spot for Michigan in, in 24. Um, and yeah, particularly at the edge spot. Good counsel, though. Yeah, so Darian Mayo, I think he's only, he's one of those, uh, has only played football for like a year, guys. I think what was interesting about him, though, when watching him, I didn't know that. Like, you know, sometimes you can kind of tell, like maybe Collins, Achi and Pong from last cycle, where the frame was there, the athleticism was there, but you could maybe tell, uh, you know, that he's still learning the game. I mean, Mayo's still a raw prospect, but he definitely looked like a kid very comfortable on the football field. So no surprise, Michigan, bunch of others are after him. Uh, but, yeah, good counsel is a program 
feels like Michigan's better. That was like, I remember when I first started doing this, I feel like Dorian O'Daniel, uh, Kendall Fuller mm-hmm. were like a couple of, a couple of the first few kids that I remember ever even reaching out to and talking to, uh, you know, from and those were guys from good counsel. So not a program that uh, Michigan's unfamiliar with at all, but, but yeah, Darian Mayo, uh, what Elijah Moore is another one. We talk about uh, wide receiver, right? We Michigan's wide receiver board. You got Channing Goodwin. You got Jordan Ship. Um, you know, I feel like there's someone else I miss. Oh, uh, Marion Stewart. You know, like three really top guys that that you could argue Michigan may be in pole position for all three of those guys. I think the question is, well, the, who's the next guy? Or who's the other guy if they decide to take more than three? And I think Elijah Moore's a name that probably has sort of gotten lost in the shuffle a little bit, but another guy from good counsel uh, that'll be up presumably sometime this month. And and a guy that, you know, you got to think one of your teammates loves Michigan this okay. much. That's going to at least rub off. It's at least going to put Michigan in contention. You think as long as he has a good visit. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, there are others at good counsel that they've offered as well. Dylan Jones, the running back is a guy that has an offer. And Kyle Altooner is a guy they've been on for, a long time he's been on the list, been up to campus, uh, a a interior lineman that can play up and down the line, actually plays tackle out at good counsel. So he he's shown some some inside, outside versatility. He has the same trainer as uh, – trying to remember the – one of the young offensive linemen, I think it's Tristan Bounds, who he shared uh, a an offensive line coach with. So there are a few different connections that – that they'll work, and it'll be interesting to see uh, if and when he makes it back up, what his timeline looks like, because the board has expanded significantly. Uh, and there are some other interior offensive linemen that Michigan really, really covets, and we're going to talk about some of those uh, as well. But Al Tuner is one to keep an eye on, That's and that's just their good counsel. <laughs> that's just their good counsel. Five guys at good counsel. But you look across the DMV, and there are other big-time targets. You got D.D. Holmes. Ed Gonzaga, which is Evan Link school. Uh, you look over at Friendship Collegiate, Bryce, and this is a, a, a guy that Michigan and the country has been chasing for a minute now. You saw him since you down to Ray Lewis's camp, and this is one of the guys who stood out to you, Dylan Stewart. Yeah, I mean, he's he's a physical freak. Six foot five, 235 pounds. I mean, he looked like he could play several positions. A guy that all the... Um, camp instructors were and just off you know he's one of those guys you see first off off the bus and you're like okay we're gonna have a long day here like this is a guy that physically looks the part he could probably play tomorrow for michigan if he had to i mean 24 7 has not re-ranked him yet but on on three just re-ranked him as the number one overall prospect in the 2024 class so either way He's a top, top target and also top, top talent. Um, and this is a guy that they've been working on. And Sam, the biggest thing they've been working on Michigan is just trying to get him to campus. Mm-hmm. It's like, geez, like, you know, at different times, he was like, ah, oh, I'm going to try to get here. I'm going to try to make a game. He just, he had, you know, other things come up. He just was never able to. But he's finally coming up that same weekend. Then Aaron Childs and some of these other guys from the DMV are going to be up on campus as well. Um, And that's a big deal. You know, I guess they can connect. They have the same, you know, uh, experiences. And they got a lot of things in common there from being from the same area. I think overall, though, first step is just seeing the faces that he's talking with. Because it's one thing to talk to guys on the phone and DM and stuff. But it's another thing to see him in person, really get to know him as an individual and stuff. So this is a guy I know he is currently an edge rusher, but he's a guy, too, I think, that Chris Partridge is definitely going to be recruiting as well. Yeah, look, he's uh, – I know we've said uh, Partridge's name a lot since he came on, but he is really connected. Um, definitely a good counsel, but in the DMV. Uh, he is strong, though, in, in good counsel. So that should help with, with those kids. But getting over to uh, to Dylan Stewart, finally getting him on campus is a huge, huge deal. Uh, just to have – you got to get those out-of-region guys on campus a couple times, you hope. But it, it starts with <laughs> the first time, right, Steve? And so uh, Dylan Stewart chased by everyone, but you've made the point several times before. 
if you're an edge guy, I mean, Michigan has a hell of a case <laughs> that they can make to you. You got to believe that's going to be compelling to them to at least have them be a fixture on his list. Got to get a look, right? I mean, the, the, the list now of guys that Michigan's produced there, and not only were productive at Michigan, but guys who have become really productive pros uh, is growing literally every year at this point, right? Uh, so, yeah, no, Dylan Stewart, this is one where I think our ranking will probably end up catching up to the comp- – I think the composite is more accurate. He's 28th overall in the country. I think we haven't passed the top 100. I think he's definitely – a top 100 level player for sure, regardless of where uh, he ends up. But yeah, I mean, this is a guy, he's one that was offered really, really early on by the staff. There's a lot of familiarity there. And uh, yeah, he's entertained a few schools. I know once South Carolina kind of randomly again, uh, their school, I feel like is always mentioned with him. I don't know. He's already been there at least once. Uh, I don't know if there's a connection to that area or something uh, or, you know, other reasons, but, but yeah, I mean, you know, this is one where ever this is a everyone's after him though, right. uh, and he seems pretty open to exploring different parts of the country. So, yeah, not a kid that I think is married to going to a school down south. I just think a couple of those schools are the ones that have maybe stood out a little bit early. So, yeah, Michigan, get them up, show them what they're all about, and, and then you know, biggest thing about these spring visits, you guys know, I think it's more mutual. See where you're at with these guys as then more than when the real stretch begins in the summer for official visits and then trying to set them up for game it is yeah look south carolina is probably feeling emboldened in the dmv after nick harbour right so you know however they they got him or whoever it was that got him you got to imagine uh that they're going to try to save strategy uh with other top targets uh period but certainly top targets in in the dmv but i, I jumped off of of offensive linemen a bit just to talk about other dmv prospects but it's going to be a big, big month, visit month for top O-line targets too, Bryce. Uh, a, a couple that we've talked about a lot here of, of late, one of them being Walt Claire Flynn, who was a, kind of a surprise visitor at one of the junior days uh, in January, but Michigan been very prominent on his list ever since. And he came out recently in a story with Brian Doan and announced he's going to be making his commitment in August. So Michigan getting them up a second time. And then eventually a third time. So you're going to get him up at, up to campus at least three times before he makes his decision in August. Yeah, this guy from Georgia, top 247 prospect, um, preferably, and I think he's going to be fit more of a center for Michigan. But he can play in the guard position. Um, and I think the biggest thing Michigan's selling to him is we're back-to-back to more award winners. I mean, it's – and on top of that – if he's a center, which most schools are recruiting him at, Sam, you could just point to the guy they just had last year. I mean, it's it, the resume speaks for itself, you know, and I know that Michigan has been kind of pitching, like, look at what we did one year of Olu. Imagine you coming here, having a few years in the system. I mean, what, what you could become. So I know that's a big deal. And the other thing, and we've always stressed this with recruitments, is the Jim Harbaugh factor. When he enters recruitments, it seems like Michigan, they're just standing, is just 10 times better. And Jim Harbaugh has been a factor in this recruitment. He personally sat next to Walt Claire at the Michigan basketball game when all the recruits were up there from the Minnesota game back in January. So this is a guy, obviously, Jim Harbaugh likes, a guy that Sharon Moore than likes, and the whole coaching staff in Michigan likes. Again, like you mentioned, he's going to be coming up to campus a couple more times. I really like where Michigan's standing right now. He's looking at a lot of other schools. But at the present time, at this moment, Michigan has to be one of the favorites in this recruitment. Yeah, and I got to hammer home again something that we mentioned on another podcast, and that is he is a childhood friend and teammate of Jaden Davis. So you be hiking the ball to your guy, to your lifelong <laughs> guy. You know they're selling that. So the, the question is, can they get them up at the same time this month? Jaden is supposed to visit this month during his spring. He's kind of moved it around a little bit. He's going to be going out west. You heard last week's episode to work, to train out there uh, with, with a QB group, then swinging back up through Michigan. Can they align it so those two guys can be on campus at the same time? You know, I know package deals aren't aren't a 
you know, iron an ironclad thing, Steve. But if you got connections, if you got dudes that have relationships already, especially a quarterback and a lineman, you got to try to leverage that. And I expect that that's what Michigan is trying to do. We have to wait to see if it works out. And that's what I was going to say. I think I think it can make a difference if quarterback is one of the guys, right? I mean, because they're the most visible players. Davis is ranked really highly. He's very highly regarded. Uh, these two obviously already know each other. You know, it, yeah, it's, uh, you know, we've seen some really random players in the past, like come together, say they're going to be a package deal, and then it never really, uh, really comes to fruition. But uh, to, to know each other this long, but yeah, again, I think for one of the players to be a quarterback, for some reason, I don't know why, maybe I could be wrong. It'd be hard to like research this, but uh, feels like it that gives it a little bit of a better shot to happen. And yeah, the center quarterback relationship is arguably the most important two player relationship on the roster uh, year in and year out. Right. So, you know, that, so that does kind of could be another little thing in, the, in that regard, but, but Flynn, I think is a top guy for them at the, at the center position, uh, whether Jaden Davis was right. uh, a legitimate target or not. Right. So, but it's, 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 but again, you can't, what more could you ask for, for your top center target and your top quarterback target to be, familiar with each other so yeah uh package deal or not you'd be it'd be foolish for Michigan to not try to pitch it uh in that vein with both guys so yeah get them both up at the same time hopefully if you're Michigan and and uh you know help them kind of keep building that connection uh in Ann Arbor yeah I know ship uh Jordan ship and Channing Goodwin are looking to make it back up this month as well the the couple of receivers uh, and Jane's receivers uh there so you try to work connections as, as best you can, whether they are connections in the class or in the recruiting class or already on campus, or maybe it's an alumni connection. And Bryce, Blake Frazier, he's a legacy. Uh, and Michigan, to their credit, not resting on that in their recruitment of Blake Frazier. They are pursuing him like they have no connection whatsoever, which is one of the reasons why I think they're resonating with him right now. Well, right now, Michigan is one for three on legacy kids. They got Jacob Odin. They're working on Channing Goodwin, as you mentioned as well. And then also Blake Fr uh, Frazier, who's a uh, – Sam, you talk about a kid that's seen his recruitment explode. He told me in the month of January he saw his offer list double. I mean, he has seen it just skyrocket, you know. And so he's got a lot of schools to choose from. I know he's going – or he has been to Texas. He likes Texas quite a bit. He's from the Austin area, so that makes sense. And Oregon recently got in the mix as well, and he's going to take a visit. But he mentioned to me, you know, he came up for the Maryland game, and the biggest thing for him was Michigan's approach to his recruitment, where it's easy to just say, hey, you're a legacy kid, whatever. Put you on the back burner. We know you're interested. We're not going to – but that's not what Michigan and Sharon Moore, they're doing. You know, they're looking at him as, and basically telling him, Listen, regardless of where your dad went or anything like that, we want you because you're just a good player. And that's really resonating not only with him, but with his family as well. He's making a return trip up in March this month from the 17th to the 20th. So he's going to be in Ann Arbor several days. And that's a great opportunity for him to see more of the campus because he was only here for a day or so, you know, when he came up for the Maryland game. So this is going to give him an extended look at the campus he gets to see spots maybe hasn't seen maybe go to mr spots with his dad who probably stopped there once or twice as an offensive lineman yep. back in the late 90s maybe so, even the brown jug don't get a burger <laughs> just don't get a burger wherever you just right. don't get a burger there but um yeah i don't know I so. say, man, i heard <laughs> <laughs> so you gotta love perry perry is the brown jug owner and the the rumor is that he's gonna have a new burger called the Level One Violation. Oh, <laughs> uh, why would you not? Like that? That's you know, that's just that's just. You gotta, I mean, right you there, get right? you got it. You gotta get that right. You gotta get that right, Absolutely, man. Absolutely. That's Perry. Oh. I don't know if he's actually gonna do it, but that's the word out there. So, we'll man, see. those things would sell. Those like I can't. He has yes. a lot around the corner. Oh Man, my people goodness. come out of town to get the level one burger. I'm just saying. Oh, they get autographs, get the get it signed and everything. The level one. Mark uh, Hammer 
You know, hey. he's got a lot of free time. He's got a lot of free time now after leaving that say Maybe we'll get a love and wolf burger. See what the what's Who all. Knows? But yeah, so Blake, he will be coming up again. This is a guy, like I said, he's a legacy guy, four star offensive tackle. And the thing about him, Sam, we mentioned with Darren Mayo, he's kind of learning the offensive tackle positions as well because he told me that he was actually playing like tight end growing up and stuff like that. And his high school coach said, I know obviously your roots and your genetics with your dad. You're going to keep growing. Let's try out at offensive tackle. And now he's got close to 30 offers or more. So obviously that was a good choice by him and his family to make that move. But I love where Michigan sits there too. I know he wants to commit before his senior season, he told me. Um, and he wants to take officials after. So there's a good chance Michigan might see him up not once, but twice here as well. So, Steve, the other thing, uh, you know, while we're sticking talking about Texas linemen, uh, Max Anderson, another really, really high value prospect for, for Michigan, high value lineman for Michigan, another guy they're looking to have up on campus in March. Yeah, so Max Anderson, a guy I think put – Bryce, I believe you're the one that talked to him after his offer. I did. He put Michigan in his top group, like right from the get go. Uh, that's where this cycle feels a little bit different than the past, where like it does really feel like, a, particularly up front, that a Michigan offer is starting to resonate a little bit more on the surface. Uh, I'm not saying a Michigan offer usually does resonate with guys, but it just feels a little bit different where kids are taking a much bigger notice uh, when they are getting the Michigan offer. So. I mean, you're talking about offer into top group into visit. Uh, that's usually a good, about as good of a start as you can ask for, you know. And, and Anderson's a kid, got a lot of schools after him. Uh, I think he's a 30 plus offer. No, sorry, 21 plus offer. He has had a visit to Tennessee. Uh, he is a kid that Alabama is recruiting as well. So, you know, the Texas schools are involved like always. But, but yeah, no, another guy which, he could be an interior exterior outside guy, I think, as well. Uh, you know, and and we know Michigan is going to want to take at least one, if not two, of those types. So, um, yeah, Max Anderson, a guy we haven't talked a lot about, but depending on how this visit goes, might be a guy we're going to be talking more about. Uh, you know, if Michigan makes a move, like it sounds like they could. Yeah, uh, sticking with the O line theme, a guy we have talked a lot about, and a state we've talked a lot about. Ben Roebuck in Ohio, Bryce, I mean, continues to be a guy for Michigan. And then there's another lineman. Oh, go over to Akron. William Satterwhite is another guy that the Wolverines are, are pushing for. So the Ohio theme is strong. And definitely, like I said, this is going to be a big month for uh, for old linemen. Yeah, and I think Michigan right now, the biggest thing they want is to find the right fit. You know, I think, like Steve said, it since I've seen some of these offers go out, it's been a different type of reaction. I mean, they've always kids have always been excited when they get a Michigan offer, but when they get when these offensive linemen are getting an offer from Michigan, it just seems to hit differently. Um, and these are two guys from the state of Ohio, Sam. You mentioned that both are extremely interested in Michigan, not only just because of what they've done with six, uh, the success up front, but the clink factor. Clink has made so many inroads in the state of Ohio. From Youngstowns to Cincinnati to Columbus area. I mean, everywhere you look, he's got his fingerprints ran all over it. And he's done a fabulous job recruiting in the state. And guys are taking notice. You know, you got Luke Hamilton, who's currently committed to Michigan, working on Ben Roebuck. You got Ted Hammond, who just committed to Michigan back in January. He's working on several guys as well. So you got a lot going in Michigan's favor in that direction. Plus, it's a little easier sell, you know, when you're talking to a kid from Ohio after beating Ohio State a couple times, especially with the last one being in their own house. So you got good vibes. Yeah, after beating them down a couple times. You didn't just beat them. You just you, – you, you manhandled them. You yeah, destroyed man. them. You broke a foot off in the behind. I mean, you, you have a lot to say. You got to say it like Clink would say it. Right? So that's how that's how Clink would say it. So – Hey, right. hey, 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 that's a, that sounds like a level one right there. You got to relax. <laughs> right, yeah, but it, does, it does hit a lot different, and you bring up a great point. Look, all those guys, none of those guys you just mentioned are DBs. I mean, there are some DB, Bryce West, Darren, I mean, there are other guys that they're on 
that our DB that he's on at our DBs, but he is recruiting all over the state and all the positions, which gets us over to, for instance, the Jordan Marshall, Steve, who we've talked a lot about. I mean, you know, he's one of the, the top tailback targets and you've, you've been doing some work on kind of setting the running back board. We have been very forward in saying that Michigan and recruit the elite backs in this country. Michigan should have all of them lined up on the mess. They should have a five-star backs up and down the uh, the recruiting board. And it's, it looks like they do, but your whole board can't be five stars, right? You got to have it rounded out and have some, some guys that are maybe a little more on the developmental curve. So as you kind of analyze uh, that sort of scenario, who are some of the other names we should look for? And who are some of the other guys that will wind up being on campus this month? So, yeah, so Jordan Marshall, you mentioned out of Cincinnati, probably the probably the tip top, probably the number one guy, right? Michigan's already in the final four there. Uh, the other big, big time name is Taylor Tatum out of Texas, out of Longview, Texas, top 100. He's already been on campus. That's just going to be a really, really national recruitment, right? Not one, even though Michigan's off to a good start, not a guy any of us would be predicting in the class or anything like that, at least at this point. So, those have kind of been the top two guys. I think two other guys that I look closely at are another Texas back. Harry Stewart is a guy that's coming up in about a week and a half from when we're recording right now. Uh, you know, Mike Hart basically started the winter eval period on the road, started in East Texas and offered like three or four different guys in like a very small area. Uh, Stewart's the first one to set a visit to come up, uh, like I said, which will be in about a week and a half. You know, these types of guys will learn more after they're, they've been there. You know, could be a situation where you see a guy like that fly up the board uh, or, you know, maybe things go whichever way. Other guy I kind of think of is Darian Dupree out of Chicago, right? A, proximity. We know Michigan's done really, really well in Chicago. B, I think he's a really good running back. He's one of the higher ranked other guys uh, on the board. And C, the Michigan got in early enough still where it sounds like that they're going to be able to, to really make some inroads here. You know, Notre Dame is the other major program, but, you know, we think Michigan can go head to head for a Chicago prospect at the running back position. So those are really the two guys that I looked closest at uh, so far. You know, we mentioned Dylan Jones earlier from Good Counsel. I'm not 100 percent sure Michigan is going really strong there. Uh, Kedrin, Kedrin Young is another one out of East Texas that Michigan just offered. He's really good. In my opinion, he might be the best guy they've offered out of this recent run of, of back offers, uh, but has and has kind of a weirdly sort of regional, sort of national offer sheet. So, you know, he's another guy I think we'll be kind of monitoring to see if Michigan, uh, you know, is able to get him up on campus this spring or summer. And we'll link to these guys in the article and stuff or on the message board after we, we post so that people know uh, exactly who we're talking about. Yeah, absolutely. We'll, we'll keep you up to speed. Another prospect, not a tailback by trade. He does moonlight as one. He did help lead his team to a state title, playing some pivotal snaps at running back over at Belleville High School, and that's Jeremiah Beasley. But he's a he's mainly a linebacker target. Make no mistake, one of the top linebackers in the country. I think he's number 14 nationally. We've talked about him before. He was on the verge of making a decision. Uh, on March 15th, that was the date that he had set to end his recruitment, and then he pumped the brakes. He slowed it down, said he wanted to look around and see some other schools. We had him in studio here recently to talk about his recruitment, and he admitted a couple of, like he admitted early in his recruitment, Michigan State was out front. Stands to reason that's the case. His brother's there, right? It's an opportunity to play with his brother. For a year, his brother's Malik Carr, for folks who don't know, tight end at Michigan State. But he also admitted that Penn State had taken the lead at some point. That has to be kind of recently because I think I think Penn State just offered, didn't they? Didn't Penn State just offer in like December or January or something like that? They offered him. Yeah, they offered him while he was on campus, I believe. And Allen did a good recap of his of his visit. And it sounded like they made a big move with that offer. So, yeah. Yeah, so uh, it, it, there was a period of time. He didn't say exactly when, but he said, yeah, Penn State was on top. 
And then Tennessee. Tennessee, one of his mom's two alma maters. She started her college basketball career at Tennessee uh, for the Hall of Fame coach Pat Summit. Ended up at Ohio State, right? And, and so there were rumblings that Tennessee was out front. You got Tim Banks there. You know, Brian Jean-Marie is an outstanding recruiter. This is positional recruiter. So they were really putting the, the hammer down on a recruiting trail to the point where it was my opinion. He didn't say this. It was my opinion that he was on the verge of committing there if, if, if he had made his decision on the 15th. But he didn't make his decision on the 15th. And I mentioned this in, in a blog. I mentioned this on the board. That was good news for Michigan because getting back to Steve Klinkscale, who was the first to offer Jeremiah Beasley when he was at Kentucky. They have a longstanding relationship. He has a longstanding relationship with the, with the family, too. Hey, Clink is kind of like the he, – he's like another family member, kind of like the, the uncle is what Jeremiah called him. But, you know, got to get to know the position coach. Got to get to know the head coach. I think they were further along the line – the other schools are further along the lines – in one or both of those areas. And I think that was one of the reasons why maybe they were, they had taken the lead, but Michigan has since made up significant ground. No, he lows out, but I want to say it was the day that CP got in. He was on the phone with Jeremiah Beasley. Maybe, maybe he got on the phone with Aaron Childs and then called Beasley right after or vice versa. All I know is Jeremiah said, he called me that day and was like, you are a top priority. I want you at Michigan. This is where you need to be. He said he's in a group chat with Harbaugh. Harbaugh sending him inspirational quotes in the morning, right? So they have identified him as a dude and are prioritizing him in that way. And I think that's really moving the meter with him. And then the other thing that his mom wanted me to make sure that I mentioned, because his dad brought him up, I think, is my opinion. I think dad really likes Mitch. He won't say it, though, right? He's he's neutral. You got to know Big Will uh, to to – kind of get something out of him. He'll never admit it, that he has any lanes. I think he likes Michigan. Mom, though, Tennessee and Ohio State. Ohio State's not on the list. Tennessee is, right? So stands the reason that she would like for him to go to Tennessee, but, you know, he said she's not going to push him there. So I asked him point blank, what about Michigan? If you go to Michigan, your mom, Ohio State alum, would she support that? Would she wear the maize and blue? He said, now, she'll support me, but she'll never wear Michigan. You got to understand, she will never wear the maize and blue. He goes home, and he tells his mom this story. Well, Sam asked me if I went to Michigan, would, would you wear the maize and blue? And I told him, hell no. <laughs> I told him, hell no, you wouldn't wear any maize and blue. She made him pick up the phone and call me. He calls me on the phone and said, if I go to Michigan, my mama says she's going to wear Michigan. She's going to support me all the way, and not just in word, but in deed. She is going to wear the maize and blue. Michigan has a real shot, a real shot, a real strong shot, I would say, at, at overtaking the field for Jeremiah Beasley. They just needed time to do so. So getting him on campus so he can be in front of CP, getting him on campus so he can be more with, with, uh, with Jim as well, making him feel more at home. Jacob Oden, he played little league football with Jacob Oden, played with Amir uh, Herring. I mean, all these guys go back. And then another one, guys, and Steve, you know this, you'll know this name, Boo Carter, DB out of Tennessee. This is another thing that he talked about. He said, man, we're talking about going to school together. We, you know, they, they're Max X teammates, they're seven on seven teammates, got a real good relationship. The schools that they have in common, are Tennessee and Michigan. Now, I know, Bryce, you think that probably helps Tennessee more, but I just think, I, I think the longer this goes, the, the, the better Michigan is with Beasley. And the better they are with Beasley, there's a chance, Steve, that that could mean the better they are with, with Carter. Who knows? I know we don't, like I said, package deals aren't ironclad, but it would be another connection to a top, top target for Michigan. Jeremiah Beasley, a top, top target for Michigan. So to his boot card. Right. And I mean, we, we like to straighten it out. I mean, it's still a good thing that these guys, right. It's, it's not a guarantee that a kid, that two guys are going to commit to the same school, but you can't say it's a, it's a negative for Michigan. I mean, right. it's, 
it's a positive no matter what, right? So, uh, and these are guys who were separately were already top targets for the staff on their own. It's not a, hey, I'm friends with this guy. You guys should recruit him harder. I mean, they've been recruiting Boo Carter really hard for a while. I mean, made his top five. So, you know, yeah, it's I, sometimes, you know, yes, we the package deal is not a thing that works out a lot or you know, there's plenty of instances where it doesn't, but it doesn't mean it's not a good thing if you're Michigan. Um, and to be fair, if you're Tennessee, right? I mean, they if they both know each other, uh, that, you know, it's it's better than them not – Better than two target top guys not knowing each other, right? It's it's going to be a positive. So, uh, yeah, no, Jeremiah Beasley, a guy maybe more than any backer target, kind of flew right back up the board after the Partridge hire. I'm not sure where Michigan – Michigan was in it, but I just say this. I think this is one guy Michigan is going to recruit much, much more vigorously with Partridge uh, manning the linebacker coach spot than they were – uh, under George Hilo. So, yeah. you know, for whatever reason, uh, but either way, I think you're going to see Michigan go even harder on this one than they, than they were to begin with. And, and again, that's another benefit because we know uh, how, how good of a job Chris Partridge does with guys that he, he really wants. So yeah, man, this, you know, a lot of positives for Michigan right now here. You know, this is a heavyweight recruiting fight here. Cause think about it. You got Chris Partridge, and Steve Klinkscale versus Tim Banks and Brian Jean Marie. This is that it, you're talking about ace recruiters on both sides and each trying to go to each other's turf. So they're trying to come up here and get Beasley. Michigan's trying to go down there and get Boo Carter. So which one is going to come out on top? This is the like if you enjoy recruiting and following the drama of it, it doesn't get any better than this matchup. So this is the one where you get your popcorn ready because uh, we talked about Partridge a lot in this one. We talked about Steve Klinkscale a lot in, in this one as well. And these two guys, you know, you got a staff full of guys or, you know, a lot of guys on this staff now that have reputations as, as really, really good recruiters. But here in the early going, those two are really, really, you're kind of feeling their presence on the recruiting trail in a big way. Now we'll have to wait to see if it translates into, into getting some guys. I would have to say the guy that I'm closest to, let's, let's end this way. Who are you closest to putting a crystal ball in on? For me, it's Aaron Childs. I'm the closest. I, I think Michigan was leading for Aaron Childs before George Hilo left. George did a great job in that recruitment. There was, it was a setback when, uh, when Michigan and George parted ways. But he was still very high on Michigan. CP was still very much in the mix. And CP is an outstanding recruiter, and he's coming back to campus. If that visit goes well, I'm probably going to put in a crystal ball for Aaron Childs. He's who I'm closest to putting one in on. Bryce, let's go to you. Who are you closest to putting a crystal ball in on right now? Uh, you took my answer. You took my answer. I, like I said, I felt he Michigan leads right now going into this visit. So if I feel that confident, I can't only imagine how well Michigan's going to do on this trip. Um, but I mean, I think they're close to several others, but I think Aaron Childs, if I had to pick one safely right now, I think that's a big one, Sam. I mean, if you could pick one, I think a lot of fans would say, let's pick Aaron Childs. So that's a very good one. Right. Steve, if you had to pick one guy, who are you closest putting crystal ball in? So, you know, these guys don't get a lot of opportunity to visit a ton of schools in the spring. They have to be pretty judicious with where they go. I think the fact that Blake Frazier is coming up for four days on March 17th, I think bodes really, really well for Michigan's chances. Uh, they already had some things in their favor in this one. He's made a point to kind of downplay the legacy aspect of his recruitment. But at the end of the day, I still think that matters Uh to some extent, right, to follow in your dad's footsteps. Uh, and again, Michigan has not made that the focus. Uh, he's a guy they've offered early on. He's been recruited as like, I think he and Andrew Sprague are Michigan's top two offensive line targets, uh, period, honestly, uh, in this cycle. So I think given the fact he's going to be up there for that long, I, I could see quiet kid, doesn't like to talk to the media very much. Kind of the 
sort of one of those t- typical offensive line types who may maybe maybe wants to end it um, a little bit earlier than anticipated and uh, you know make a choice. So I know Clemson, some other big schools. He's he's got a lot of them now. Uh, I know Clemson's another program's been mentioned a lot, but I'm I'm going to go with Blake Frazier. I think. That that four day visit, that's a long visit. You know, he could go see a couple other schools that same weekend if he wanted to, but to spend four days in Ann Arbor, I think bodes really well for their chances. All right, we got you down. Steve, as always, fellas, been an outstanding episode. And folks, this is just to wet your whistle. I mean, you want all the deep intel, all the details. Uh, all the breaking news, all the practices, spring practice intel has been flowing hot and heavy on the site as well. You need to follow us over on the MichiganInsider.com. One dollar gets you in your first month. Even if you just stuck with that first month and, and stay with us through spring football, you would get a ton. But you want to stay with us longer than that because into the summer, a lot of great recruiting coverage. Uh, you got AAU coverage on the basketball side of things as well. Uh, then you get into summer conditioning and then, of course, fall camp you want to stick with us all the way and then of course once you become a full paying member you get that access to paramount plus with your 24 7 sports subscription and you can't beat it from the series 1923 to the series mayor of kingstown and many many more you want to join us even if it was just to get paramount plus but that that's just a perk that's just a perk folks if you like this podcast be sure to rate it be sure to review it. Be sure to tell all your friends about it. They can find it wherever they get their podcasts. That's Google, Stitcher, Spotify, iTunes, you name it. And, of course, if you like watching us on YouTube, like the video, subscribe to the channel. That way you'll get an update every time we do a new episode. Until that next, next episode, thanks for watching another edition of the Michigan Recruiting Insider.